Well, good morning. Welcome to Our Lady of the Desert Chapel. We're celebrating the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and we're celebrating God's great love for you and for me. We come from far and near, and happy that you can all be with us to celebrate God's love today. And so we are gathered from far and near in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and the peace of our loving God, the deep joy of Jesus, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I know that uh, some of my friends up in uh, Michigan and also in Minnesota are also watching us. We're celebrating the Eucharist with us too. So welcome to Our Lady of the Desert Chapel, a beautiful day to celebrate God's love. You know, Jesus today reminds us that he feeds 5,000 people. They're very hungry. They're out in the countryside. And he works that beautiful miracle again, having great compassion. He has that same compassion for you and for me. So let's thank our God. Let's praise our God. Lord Jesus, you feed the hungry and care for the poor. Lord, have mercy. In Christ Jesus, your healing touch brings wholeness and life. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you are just in all your ways, holy in all your works. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer our prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, living with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come receive grain and eat. Come without pain and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me and you shall be well. You shall delight in rich fare, Come to me heedfully, listen that you may have life. I will renew you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. The response is, the hand of the Lord feeds us, he answers all our needs. The hand of the Lord feeds us, he answers all our needs. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The eyes of all look hopefully to you, and you give them their food in due season. And open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, 
What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No. In all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. The Lord be with you. A reading today from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, Jesus' heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already late. Dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, There is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Five loaves and two fish are all we have. Then Jesus said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the fragments left over, twelve wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about five thousand men, not even counting all the women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Beautiful Gospel readings on this 18th Sunday and this day, August 2nd, year 2020, a day we never lived before, we'll never live it again. And a God gathers us here today to teach you and me how to be compassion as Jesus. Now in the Gospel, here we have Jesus hears the death of John the Baptist. Herod had cut his head off. And Jesus now realizes he is in danger too. And also he's grieving the death of John the Baptist. So I think he just wants to be able to go away, find a quiet spot, pray, and just be alone. But he gets to the other side, and what's happened? They're all there before him. All the crowds search Jesus out because they too have needs. And what happens as the gospel says, he saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them. He had compassion for them. He wasn't going to turn them away. So here you have, in a sense, I guess I'd say it this way, the misery of Jesus, his grieving, his fear, what might happen to him coming down the line, and then his mercy for the crowd. So misery and mercy join together and become compassion and healing. What a beautiful image. Jesus calms all their fears, and now he knows they're hungry. And of course, he says to the disciples, you give them something to eat. And what now happens? They come together and say, are you out of your mind? Oh, we got our five loaves and two fish. Well, what does that make? The number seven. And the number seven in the Bible is symbolic for God's gifts to you and me, that symbol of wholeness, of completion. So you have a choice. You can look at the five loaves and the two fish and see them as a gift from God. Or perhaps you look at them and say, we don't have enough. What you see 
and how you see determines what is possible. When you just focus on what you don't have, if all you see is the negative, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough food. I'm out of strength. I don't have enough energy. Oh, how are we going to find food to do this? I'm too tired. I'm worn out. If all you see is the lack, all the negative things, what you see, you give power to over your life. There's a beautiful little story, I think, that illustrates that. Uh, maybe you've heard it before. But it's a teacher, and she was telling me what she did with her class. And she had all the students in, in the classroom. She said, oh, children, I want you to look around the room and just look at all the red things that you see in the room. Oh, they all looked around her, seeing all the red objects and things. She waited a couple of moments, and she said, okay, children, now close your eyes. And now I want you to imagine all the blue objects in the room and keep your eyes closed. Well, after a couple of moments, she said, okay, you can open them. And of course, the children didn't see any blue objects because they had focused only on the red objects. When we close our eyes and we see what we don't want to see and we become negative, then what happens? We block the presence of God and his grace in this moment. So what has happened? Jesus sees what they have. Okay, five rows. Two fish. They are God's gift to you. So, in the spiritual life, the first thing to do is knowing what you have. Being aware of your gifts, of your talents. It's my hands at this moment. It's my love. It's my smile. It's my joy. It's my hope, my compassion, what I can give to you, what I can share with you. Don't see the lack. See what you already have. Be aware of the gifts that you have. They are God's gifts to you. And then secondly, look what Jesus, what did he do? He took the five loaves, looking up to heaven, he said the blessing. Gratitude then comes next. Gratitude flows. You give thanks to our God for what has been given to you. And then what happens? As Jesus has freely received, and now he freely gives to the disciples, that they in turn may give thanks for what they have, and now they give freely to the crowds. And what does the gospel say? Twelve wicker baskets were full after they all ate. Maybe 10, 15,000 people there. There's no scarcity in God's love. There's always plenty of God love to go around. Paul, in that second reading, he says to us, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Only, I guess, our pride, our selfishness, and our negativity will limit God's unconditional love. Not even pain or anguish or death can separate God's love from you. If you focus only again on the negative or the lack, then you block God's generous and unconditional love. So very simply, be aware of what you have. Give thanks that your gifts and who you are and where you are is a gift from God. And then be willing to share and give to others. Because God can transform our frailties and our weakness into wonderful healing and miracles. I'd like us today to, I'm sure, hopefully you can remember that beautiful, the Apostles' Creed. You know, it's a little bit shorter than the Nicene Creed, and hopefully we all remember it. We pray together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. There he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With great confidence and trust, it's God to hear our prayers for today. For ourselves, the church, that we may welcome all who hunger for meaning and purpose into our assembly, where they can be nourished by the word of God and the bread of life, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the grace to trust, that we may recognize that nothing can separate us from the love of God, that we will rely upon God through all the challenges of life, we pray to you, Lord. Lord Hear our prayer. For a spirit of awe and wonder, that we may recognize God's generosity, who abundantly blesses us and fulfills all our needs, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For fuller gratitude, that we may appreciate all the gifts which God has given us and freely share them with all who are in need, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who work in support for food pantries, that their efforts may show the love and compassion of God to the hungry children and families of our world, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who visit and bring nourishment to the sick and the homebound, that they may see Christ and all whom they serve and bring God's love to those whom they visit. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And gracious God, hear these prayers that we've spoken and those that are deep in our hearts today. Fill us up, as always, with that deep compassion, gentleness, and love of your Son, Jesus, that you again may love through us to touch the hearts and lives of others. Bring us all closer to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we all pray that the offerings of ourselves and our gifts will be accepted by our loving God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Graciously accept these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the offering of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you laid the foundations of our world, and you have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image, setting us over the whole world and all its wonder. You to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever to praise you in your mighty works through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so today, with all of the angels and saints, we praise you as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread 
and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Edward our Bishop, all the clergy, the religious, and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Joseph, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And we continue praying in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, fears, worries, and anxieties, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to all of us, your apostles, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May our Lord's peace be always with you. And wherever we are this day and whoever we're with, turn to them and give them a nice big smile and wish them the peace and the joy of Jesus. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. We know and we believe that this is Jesus who every day walks with us on the journey of love to be compassionate and loving. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
now we will play our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you into my heart. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. For this I pray. Amen. And yesterday, the Redemptors throughout the world celebrated the feast of St. Alphonsus Liguori, who was the founder of us, of our Redemptors congregation. And uh, Alphonsus always believed in the well, praying, and he said, acquire the habit of speaking to God as if you were alone with him, familiarly and with confidence and love as to the dearest and most loving of friends. What a beautiful image that God is your friend. And you just sit and talk and be with them and listen. That's prayer. Um, you might be wondering, as you look from different places, perhaps, and you see behind me uh, what would be the Stations of the Cross. I'm saying Mass, so we call our oratory here at Our Lady of the Desert Chapel. Our church itself is closed. Uh, so we're in a very tiny little room, and we're saying Mass here, so it's a different place. But it's still the Eucharist that we're celebrating. And we're happy to announce that Beginning next Saturday and next weekend throughout our diocese now, Bishop uh, Edward has allowed us now once again to have public masses and of course doing social distancing and everything. So we're going to go back to our weekend mass schedule that we had before the pandemic started. So it'll be four o'clock on Saturday night and Sunday morning, 7.30 and 10, I believe. So uh, hopefully we get to see a lot of our Lady of the Desert people back again and uh, Wherever you are in your lives, too, that you know and that God loves you and cares so much about you. And you pass that love on. Let us pray. A company with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts. And in your never-failing care for us, make us worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace and glorify the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God.